Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a beginner action bar guide. So if you're a new or returning player, or just someone looking to learn more about abilities and the action bars within RuneScape 3, this is definitely going to be the video for you. Since this is a beginner guide, I am only gonna be going over the basics, but I'm also gonna recommend a few suggested action bars that you guys can try out. And we're also going to look at some AFK action bars that will be super helpful when you're doing some AFK combat. So anyway guys, I really hope you do enjoy the video and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you do enjoy. Anyway, let's begin. So we're going to start off by looking at some basic info about the abilities and action bars. So abilities, they are used in combat and they were introduced in November of 2012 following the evolution of combat. Before that, combat was sort of turn-based where they used a sort of tick system. Now they have abilities which makes combat a lot more complex. So I'm going to be talking about the complexity of the abilities and which abilities would be best to use and so on. Now also each combat skill has its own set of abilities. So for example there's attack, defense, constitution, magic, and ranged abilities. And then also abilities are broken down into basic, threshold, and ultimate abilities, which all use an adrenaline type system, which I am going to be talking about later on in the video. So we're going to start off by looking at basic abilities. So basic abilities, they can be used without adrenaline. And whenever you use a basic ability, you will gain 8% adrenaline for each ability that you use. And these abilities, they usually have increased damage and special effects or both. And of course, there are basic abilities for both melee, ranged, and magic. And essentially, you'll always need to use basic abilities so that you can build up your adrenaline. And then you can use your threshold and ultimate abilities. And this leads us into our second type of abilities, which are threshold abilities. So these abilities, they do require 50% adrenaline to use, and they will drain 15% of that adrenaline when you do use them. And generally, these abilities deal more damage than the basic abilities, and they have stronger effects as well. Threshold abilities are often used after you use a certain ultimate ability, especially for magic and ranged, which I am going to talk about later. Um, but basically, threshold abilities, they are really important, and they do deal a lot of damage compared to a lot of the other abilities. And so the third type of ability is ultimate abilities. And ultimate abilities require 100% adrenaline to use and they drain the whole bar. And these abilities deal a large amount of damage and they provide. So for example, a few ultimate abilities that are super useful for both ranged and magic are death swiftness and sunshine. So these abilities, what they do is they create uh, sort of an area where if you're standing within that area, your damage in is increased by 50% for around 20 seconds. So as you can see, this is where you will be dealing a lot of extra damage. And then if you do use these threshold abilities while this effect is active, you'll be dealing additional damage. Now before we move on to some recommended action bars, there are also different types of abilities in terms of their effects. So first off, there is the AoE abilities or area of effect abilities. And what these abilities do, they deal damage to multiple targets. So as you can see, this is really useful for AFK combat. And then just right below, there's an example of a bunch of AoE abilities. So like Corruption Shot, Corruption Blast, Hurricane, Cleave, Quake, Smash. All of these abilities are AoE abilities and they're super useful in all AFK uh, situations because you can hit multiple targets at once. Now looking at DOT abilities or damage over time abilities, they can also be called bleeds. Um, but when, what these are, when activated, the target will take damage over time. So some examples for these include Slaughter, also cor Corruption Blast and Corruption Shot. They're both bleeds and area effect abilities. So some do have multiple effects in the same ability. But bleeds are also a really powerful ability, uh, especially on certain creatures. For example, Slaughter, when you do use Slaughter, it deals damage over time, but if that target is moving, it will deal additional damage. So that is one way to maximize the use of that ability and maximize your damage per second. And so lastly, the third type of ability that I do want to go over is essentially just the ability damage abilities. Now what these are, they're essentially just abilities that deal additional damage. 
So most abilities deal ability damage, which is determined by the player's weapon and the skill level. So if you are using, for example, ranged and you're using uh, ranged threshold ability like snapshot, then the damage you deal when using that ability does depend on the weapon you are using and also your ranged level in this case. So essentially these abilities will deal extra damage when you do use them and they can also be some of your more powerful abilities. Also I should mention that all three of these types of abilities there is basic abilities, threshold abilities, and ultimate abilities that have all of these effects. So that is something that I should also point out. And just briefly, there is sort of a fourth type of ability, which is your stat boosting abilities. So for example, Death Swiftness is a pretty good example of one. And what it does, it will increase your damage for a certain amount of time. So there are a few abilities like this, but there really aren't that many. These abilities still are super useful. Death Swiftness is the best ultimate ability for range that you can use. So they are also really overpowered abilities that I am going to discuss later in the video. So for this next section of the video, I do want to just briefly talk about some of the settings that you can change for your action bar. And to go change these, you will want to go into your settings and into the combat tab under combat mode. So the first thing that you will need to do is choose between full manual, revolution, and legacy combat mode. So if you are going to be using full manual, you will need to trigger all of your abilities manually. So this is very difficult and for beginners I wouldn't suggest using full manual although it is the best way to do combat and you can get the highest DPS using full manual. However it will add a much higher degree of difficulty so for that reason I would recommend using revolution. And revolution allows you to automatically use abilities on your action bar. So this makes combat much easier. You can choose to trigger just basic abilities. Um, automatically or you can switch it to do thresholds and ultimates as well by toggling these settings at the bottom on and we will be going over those once we get down there now next is the legacy combat mode so this sort of just removes abilities altogether and makes it much closer to the old school combat style with the tick based combat and turn based combat so this isn't the best way to do combat you can't get the highest dps it is however good for some things like revenants but for the most part legacy combat isn't that great this next setting allows you to change the revolution size on your action bar essentially what it is is allows you to toggle how many abilities you want to automatically use if you do have revolution on so as you can see i have it on 12 so the first 12 abilities on my action bar will be used automatically since I do have revolution toggled on. And then the last thing that you can change in this setting is of course if you want to automatically use your basic abilities, thresholds, or ultimates. So as you can see I have them all toggled on. So since I have revolution on, my basic abilities, thresholds, and ultimates will automatically be used. This is going to be something that you are going to want to make sure that you do have toggled on if you're doing an AFK method. For example, if you're doing Abyssal Demons with Aggression Potions, you will want to have all three of these things toggled on. So now that we went over the basics of abilities and also the settings for your action bar, I do want to go over some example action bars that you guys can use. So first off, I do have uh, sort of just a suggested action bar for both two-handed weapons and dual wield weapons for melee. So we're going to start with two-handed weapons. So the first ability you're going to want is Cleave. So this is one of the better basic abilities for melee. It does 188% of your weapon damage. So that is pretty high for a basic ability, as high as it goes actually. And then next is Dismember. This is a bleed ability. It is a really high damaging ability, although it does the damage over time. Um, but it is considered one of the best melee abilities. Next is Sever and then Smash. And then I also put in Tuska's Wrath. This is an ability that you can purchase from the Anima Islands D&D. And it does deal 110% of your weapon damage. However, if you are on a Slayer task, it will deal damage equal to 100 times your Slayer level. So if you have level 100 Slayer, it's going to deal 10,000 damage. So this is one of the better abilities to use if you are on a Slayer task. And so next is the ability Fury. So Fury is a basic strength ability. However, it does last 5 seconds, but you do not want it to last this long. When you do use Fury, you're going to want to quickly switch to another ability because Fury does have 
sort of a stat boosting buff where it does increase the crit chance of your next hit. So that is basically why you want to have that ability in there. Um, then we also have Slice and Sacrifice. So these are two other pretty solid abilities. Now for this action bar, you can see that I only have the revolution size set to seven and those first seven abilities are all basic abilities so for this action bar setup you are going to want to manually use your threshold abilities and your ultimate abilities so the first thing that you're going to want to do as you can see in my ability rotations box so for two-handed weapons you're going to want to switch to your ring of vigor if you do have one you can purchase it from the dungeoneering shop what this ring does is when you do use an ultimate ability which as i mentioned before uses all of your adrenaline if you do have this ring on, it will only use 90% of your adrenaline, so then you'll have 10% left to save up for your next threshold ability. So anyway, once you get up to 100% adrenaline, switch to that ring if you do have it, then you're going to want to use the ability Berserk. Berserk is an ultimate ability that does last 20 seconds. What this ability does, it allows for all melee damage dealt by you. Uh, to actually be doubled, but the damage taken from the monster and other players is increased by 50%. So essentially you will be taking more damage, but you'll also be dealing twice as much damage. So once you do have this ability active, then you're going to want to use your threshold abilities, starting with Assault, then Hurricane, Blood Tendrils, and then Slaughter. Now once Berserk does deactivate, you're going to want to build up your adrenaline again, try to get to 100%, and then go through this ability rotation again. Now looking at Dual Wield, it is basically the same. The suggested action bar is almost identical to the two-handed weapon action bar. However, I did just swip, switch the uh, Dual Wielded abilities for those two-handed abilities. And then looking at the ability rotations, it is almost identical I just switched hurricane with destroy which can only be used with two-handed weapons so now we're going to look at the ranged setup so first we're going to look at two-handed weapons so if you do have a two-handed range weapon you're going to want an action bar to look somewhat like this so we're going to start off with corruption shot this is an ability that can be purchased from the mazcap ability codex it's a really awesome ability it is a bleed and then also a uh, AoE ability, so it is super good. Then we have Fragmentation Shot followed by Dazing Shot. These are both bleeds. Um, and then we have Snipe uh, followed by Tuska's Wrath, Sacrifice, then Binding Shot and Piercing. Now, as you can see, these are all basic abilities again. So this is another action bar where you will need to manually use your thresholds and your ultimate abilities. So looking at the ability rotation, once you're up to 100% adrenaline, again, switch to your Ring of Vigor, which is always going to be the best thing to switch to when you are going to use an ultimate ability. So switch to that, then you're going to want to use Death Swiftness. Now this is an ability that is unlocked through the World Wakes quest, which is a Grandmaster quest. So you will need that completed to unlock this ability, but it is the best ranged ultimate ability in the game. So you're going to want to use that first. What it does, it will increase your damage by 50% for 20 seconds. So when you do use this, you're going to want to then use some threshold abilities. First, you're going to want to start with Snapshot. It is the best threshold to use with a ranged weapon. Then you can use a Rapid Shot, um, then Shadow Tendrils, and then Bombardment. Now looking at the dual wield ranged action bar, you can see that it is also almost identical to the two-handed weapon action bar, although I did just switch a few of the abilities. So instead of dazing shot, which is only for two-handed weapons, you're going to want needle strike in that third spot for dual wield. Um, and then also I did just switch sacrifice with binding shot. Um, that is just a small minor change that you can do if you want and then also the ability rotation is Identical so you are going to want to use death swiftness then snapshot Rapid shot and by the time you use those two thresholds if your death swiftness is still active You're going to want to use shadow tendrils and then bombardment now once you are through this ability rotation You're going to want to make sure to build up to hundred percent adrenaline again and then go through it over and over and that's how you get the highest DPS for most creatures. Now, I should mention that sometimes it is better to use different ability rotations depending on the boss, um, but in general, this is probably the best ability rotation that you can use. 
Now moving on to the magic action bars. So first we'll look at the two-handed weapon. So we're going to start with Corruption Blast. And now this is identical to Corruption Shot, but it's for magic. You also get this ability from the Mazcap Ability Codex. Really awesome ability that you guys should get. I believe it only costs around 14 or 15 mil to buy that codex. Um, so it isn't too much money and it is a really useful ability. Um, second, we have Dragon Breath. So this is a multi-target attack and AoE ability. So it is really useful and also does a lot of damage. The third ability, we have Combust. And this is a bleed, so it will deal damage over time. So this is a pretty nice ability to use early on as well. Um, the next ability that we have is Sonic Wave, which is a basic ability that can only be used when you're using a two-handed weapon or a staff. Um, and then we also have Tuska's Wrath, then Impact, followed by Chains, and then Sacrifice. And again, these are all basic abilities, so once you get to 100% Adrenaline using these abilities, you're going to want to switch to your Ring of Vigor, then use Sunshine, which is another uh, ability that you get from the World Wakes quest. Sunshine is basically the magic equivalent of Death Swiftness. So again, it lasts around 20 seconds and will give you a 50% damage boost. So once you use Sunshine, you're going to want to follow that with Wild Magic, which is a really powerful threshold ability. Then you'll want to use Asphyxiate, followed by Smoke Tendrils if your Sunshine is still active. Now, once this ability rotation is through, you're going to want to save up to 100% Adrenaline again and then go through it over and over. Now, looking at the dual wield action bar, there is only one change. So I did change Sonic Wave, which was in the fourth slot with Concentration Blast. Now, this is a dual wield magic ability. So that is the only reason why we switched those two. One's for two-handed and then the Concentration Blast is only for dual wield. The ability rotations is identical with dual wield as well. So again, just go through Sunshine, Wild Magic, Asphyxiate, and then Smoke Tendrils. Now, as I mentioned, all of these action bars, they are the best way to get the highest DPS. However, you don't always want to use that as a setup. So I do want to go over a few AFK action bar setups. Um, for example, if you are at Abyssal Demons, you're going to want to use an AFK action bar setup. If you guys watched a few of my AFK money making guides, I do talk about this briefly. But I just wanted to go more in depth in this video on what an AFK action bar looks like and how to set that up. So that's what this last section is going to be about. So now first off, you're going to want to go into your settings and make sure you have the right things toggled on. So first things first, make sure you have revolution toggled on. You will also want to make sure that your revolution size is also pretty high. It can be completely full, um, but I would suggest having it at least at 12. Also, make sure that you do have the uh, last three things toggled on, which is automatically triggering the basic abilities, thresholds, and alternate abilities when you do have revolution on. So here I did build three AFK action bar setups for each of the combat styles. I do want to briefly go over them. So for the melee action bar, I started with Meteor Strike. Now this is an ultimate ability and it does AoE damage. It deals 250 to 350% of your weapon damage. And it deals this damage to all targets around you within a 3x3 area. So obviously this is going to be a great ability to use if you are doing an AFK method like Abyssal Demons where they're all surrounding you. This is going to be a ability that does a lot of damage next is hurricane hurricane is another aoe ability um, that will hit all the targets around you followed by quake and cleave these are also aoe abilities same with smash um, now in this next slot in the sixth slot i did put devotion so devotion does depend on what you are killing and if you are using a protection prayer or not so Devotion is a defense ability. It is also a threshold ability, so you will need 50% Adrenaline to use it. But when it is activated, all your Protection Prayers and Deflect Curses reduce the damage of the style they defend against to 1 for 10 seconds. And if you do kill an opponent, it does increase it by 5 seconds. Um, you can only do this um, to a maximum of 20 seconds. 
So this is a really useful ability if the creature you are killing does hit you pretty hard. For example, if you watched a few of my AFK guides, I use this with Corrupted Workers. They are a creature that they deal a lot of damage and you do want to use Protection Prayers. So in that situation, you would want Devotion in there because it will allow you to protect yourself from those massive hits. Um, but if you're killing Abyssal Demons, you will want to switch that out and maybe put it at the end of the action bar because you're probably going to be using Soul Split or something like that. Now the rest of the action bar is basically all of the basic abilities. So you are going to be using these last, but you will obviously need to get up to at least 50% adrenaline to start using those thresholds and then 100% to use the ultimate abilities. So that's why I just have the basic abilities at the end because you are going to just need those to gain adrenaline, but they're not your priority. Now looking at the mage action bar, I'm starting with sunshine because that is a really great ability. It will just boost your damage by 50% for 20 seconds. So it's just the best ability that you want. And you will notice that I do always have my alternate abilities at the very start of the action bar for my AFK setup. Next I have Tsunami. This is another ultimate ability, but it does deal AoE damage, so it is really great. However, it won't always be used. It'll be used rarely because Sunshine is ahead of it. Um, but third is Wild Magic, which is a really powerful threshold ability. Then I have Corruption Blast. This is a basic ability, one of the best ones that you can use because it does deal AoE damage. Same with Chains and Dragon Breath, these deal AoE damage. Then I have Sonic Wave, Tusco's Wrath, Sacrifice, followed by a few more basic abilities just to build up the adrenaline. Now for the ranged action bar, I'm starting it off with Death Swiftness, obviously because it is the best ultimate ability. Then I have Rapid Shot and then Bombardment. Bombardment is an AoE ability. Um, same with Corruption Shot and then Piercing Shot. These are also AoE abilities as well. Then I have Dazing Shot, followed by some more basic abilities. Now I would mention that range is probably the hardest to use in an AFK setup. Most AFK methods, you are going to be using melee and magic. So the ranged action bar, it would be quite tough to do uh, an AFK combat method with it, just because that ranged does seem to have a lot less AOE abilities, um, which is just basically essential for AFK methods. So anyway, these are just three really great uh, action bars for you guys if you're looking at doing some of those AFK methods like for example, Abyssal Demons, Corrupted Creatures, Muspas, stuff like that um, that you may have seen in some of my AFK money-making guides. Also, I should mention that I will link a few of my more recent AFK money-making guides in the description down below. Um, lastly, I do want to give a shout-out to the RS3 Helpers Discord. Um, I am partnershipping with them, and I do want to give them a bit of a shout-out. I will put their link in the description down below. Basically, RS3 Helpers was created to help with new and returning players just to get their feet under them, and they fully understand that RuneScape 3 can be overwhelming with almost 20 years of content behind it, um, but they just want to help you guys stay motivated and positive, and they just want to help you throughout RuneScape. So if you have any questions, you can definitely contact them in their discord um, also i will be linking my discord and feel free to message me or anyone in there um, anytime you want and we all just want to help you guys improve on the game and if you have any questions just let us know that being said i really hope you guys did learn a lot from this video action bars and abilities it is a pretty complicated topic and it is somewhat difficult to explain so if you guys have any questions about anything feel free to comment them in the comments down below or join one of our Discord servers and we can help you out with any questions that you may have. We really do just want to be here for you guys and help you guys throughout RuneScape 3 because we know this game can be pretty complicated um, and you may have a lot of questions about it. Anyway guys, I really hope you did enjoy today's video and make sure to subscribe for more content like this. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.